uh, let's hope for the best because I am pretty sure I will fail at the first book. Okay, so I lie now. So, welcome everyone. I'm Jasmine, and uh, here with me we have Giant and Equinox. Equinox is the world record holder for this game in basically every category. So. Props for him to agreeing to help with the commentary at the last minute. Such a pleasure. Very <laughs> last minute. Yeah, really. And uh, thank you, Giant, for being here. Giant is probably the guy who knows the most about this game, so you really, really should listen to his advice while we play this game. So I'm we so are going. To... Yeah. <laughs> I'm so flattered. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so we will uh, go through the world tour, which is basically the story mode of this game. I mean, it's a bit of a stretch calling story mode because this game has literally no story mode. World tour is just a series of events that you go through in order to learn the basics of this game. That should be the main objective of world tour. And to unlock stuff that you will lose uh, during time trials and multiplayer and basically all the other modes. So, um, the World Tour has these five events, there's a sixth one which will be unlocked when we finish the Any% percent run, so we will not be doing that. Uh, we will go through any of these events um, and collect the stars that you usually collect for completing the events success successfully. We will get three stars for any uh, event that we complete in A-class difficulty. At the end of the run, we have the, basically our target is getting to 95 stars in order to unlock the uh, the last event uh, of the of, of the game and that basically is the objective of our run so we will use uh, a class difficulty because it gives more stars and it's faster and as for the character choices we will basically go for metasonic because it's a dlc character but um, one of the latest updates for this game basically made it a uh, free character from the start and it's the only character that has all the um, car mods unlocked from the start and we are going to use the console mod because the console mod is just the best one for every character uh, I mean we I think we can start and we will explain stuff while it unfolds so the run we yeah. start in 3, 2, 1, go and most importantly, Metal Sonic doesn't have to waste time leveling up. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to go through uh, loading screens when it comes to characters finishing the event. So yeah. say if a character is level 1 and they finish the event, you have to wait for their experience bar to go up, and you have to wait for yeah, if so they level up and things like that. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that's, uh, that animation easily takes lots of seconds away from... Okay, that's not a bad, not a good start, but still okay. So we really yeah, want to be aware from from the AI because as you can see here, the AI really starts messing up very early. This is the worst, most reset heavy map, and luckily it's the first one. Yep. Yeah. Is and the, the reason... On this map are just totally brutal, they'll bump you everywhere. Yeah, and the reason is, basically, there are two reasons for resetting this, this game at, the, at this track. The first is this triple boost, which is extremely important to get a good time. Because of the way water works, which is, which is yeah. pretty... Uh, and the second one is the time. fish. Oh boy, the fish. The fish is great. You can actually use him as a ramp. No, <laughs> uh, oh, please don't. If you bump him properly as well, he can bump you forward. Yeah, yeah it's... But uh, we won't be doing that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, no, that's right. Oh, you're not using my strat. No, I'm using my personal strat. It works fine. And it's very consistent for me using the fish. Because that fish, in the PC version that we are playing, it actually has collision, but in the console version it doesn't. So the way a boost in water works is, like, you actually never lose speed once you attain a certain speed if you stay boosted. Yeah. So if you like if you go into the water at six boost speed, 
you, um, and you just never enter a state of non-boost, you're at 6 boost speed the entire time, even if you're only using your level 1 boosts. Yeah, the, the boost mechanic is quite complex in this game, because you have to remember that this game basically is like 3 games in 1, because you can race in a card form, both form, or plane form, because of the transform mechanic that is unique on this game. And each one has its quirks. And this here is a drift challenge. Yeah, this is just go as fast as you can. Um, drift challenge basically requires you to drift through these areas in order to accumulate more extra seconds of time. Which is okay, but not really a must uh, for uh, A class because you have a lot of time left anyway. In S-Class it becomes really, really more important to be very careful where, to dri where you drift on. If anyone notices, he's using, he's touching both boost pads as he's going through to get a uh, level 3 from both of them, as one boost pad grants you a level 2 in these events. So when he touches both of them, he gets uh, level 3 from them, as opposed to level 2. Yeah, we so probably should pass. explain how the boost mechanic works in this game. So basically boosting is... Uh, Divided into levels, so it's not it's not as simple as you just drift and boost. You have uh, actually you have different levels of boost you can attain. Um, drifting can you go up up to a level three boost, but the game has allow allows up to a level six. Um, the difference between the different levels are basically exponential, so it's extremely important to get a high levels whenever you can, compared to a lower level one. With a couple of exceptions, of course. And the way a uh, boost work varies a lot between A-class and S-class, which is basically you can view that as like 100cc from Mario Kart and 150cc. King speed being tied to difficulty. Yeah. So, oh, that was luck. <laughs> so this entire run is done basically on uh, A-class, which is... Which is um, which is not where matchmaking or time trials operates on. Those operate on S class. Yeah, the rules are a bit different because boosting is quite broken on S class. Literally, a level one boost on S class slows you down, and a level two boost does essentially nothing. <laughs> oh wow! You actually dodged the box. Yeah, exactly. I really oh. wanted to get them, but. Yo, you that's so hard to do. This game has a system of where when you do tricks, you accumulate a drift charge behind your car. So say if you do one roll, you uh, gain a level one, uh, oh, level one speed unlucky. after it. And if you do three rolls, you will gain a level three upon landing. However, if you do a triple unique, as we call them, where it's two flips, one forward, one downward, and when uh, sideways, roll sideways, you will achieve a level 4, which is usually what we try to aim for almost all the time. Usually, there's like two exceptions. Oh, that's lucky. A second glove. So he's actually uh, risk boosting an invisible wall to the left of that there. Oh yeah, that, that game is so full of mechanics. Uh, hidden mechanics, because the game is supposed to teach you a lot of stuff. It really doesn't. <laughs> there are a lot of stuff that you really need to learn by yourself. And these explosions in the water can actually hit you. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you get too close to them, you have to be careful. And, they, and, and they're still in time attack. It's the only hazard that hasn't been deactivated. I, I mean, time attack is supposed to basically stop all the, all the hazard because it usually does, but these geysers from the, the water explosions, they are still present in time attack, they are so annoying. Oh, uh, something interesting about this map, you, you can see he's actually avoiding that early plane rain. He's like literally going around it. because of, Just because of the way water boost works, because he's going to land with like a forward boost, oh, and he's yeah. going to be going way faster than he could go in plane there. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It looks like a shortcut, but if you're really good, it isn't. And as soon as you go through the transfer ring, your momentum resets. So that's another thing too. 
Okay, so we are, now we are going for the versus event, which is one of the main choke points of this run usually, because this run is surprisingly consistent. Uh, because the RNG is quite limited and the A-class AI is not as bad as the S-class But there are a couple of events which are really really RNG dependent and this is one of them Because basically you have to overtake your opponents in this run to... Okay, that's awful uh, Okay, he missed me, <laughs> that's good <laughs> Uh, you basically have to overtake your opponents. If you gain enough distance, the game will automatically set your victory flag. The little bar is on the bottom left of the screen. Yeah, and that was actually green. that was actually quite slow, to be honest. When the character's icon begins flashing, that's how you know the next round is going to begin. Shortly to stay at home. Oh my god, this is terrible! <laughs> I'm missing everything. This is easily a 20 seconds time loss just because of the AI. If the AI for whatever reason decides to help you, basically you, it slows down and you basically win this round way faster than you should be. A good example of the boat mechanic was just shown there as where a level 4 was attained going into the water and then a level 1 was used through a drift charge to maintain the momentum in the water so he could have increased boost speed throughout the whole water section. Yeah, so he was going yeah. forward boost the whole time because of that. And now we go for a boost challenge. I think this is the only boost challenge we will do in this run. So a boost challenge is just basically uh, there is a timer. Uh, if the timer reaches zero, you lose. But you can stop the timer for 2.5 seconds each time you basically boost. Essentially, you could chain level 1 boosting to not have the timer drain if you really wanted to be cautious about the timer. But how this timer works, you really don't have to do that as there are multiple boost pads across the events. Oh yeah, another thing that you will see me doing quite a lot yeah, is basically um, aligning myself in order to hit two boost pads at the same time. Uh, because these gives you a higher level boost because the game sometimes some boost pads are close enough that the game still thinks they are the same but for a couple of them like these ones the game thinks they are two different boost pads so they you will get um, two boosts at the same time basically oh and also the most important mechanic in the game pretty much on, on a basic level is the whole drift switch Oh yeah. So that's, so that's when you see him alternating directions while drifting. So what that does is it basically, once you retain a certain level of drift, you can drift switch by letting go of drift and like ch turning directions, and then you yeah. can drift again. That that keeps your drift charge. Your, yeah. and that's extremely useful for getting a higher level drift. It's it's critical to going fast in general. You have to remember that switch drifting resets the time to charge for the next level of drift if you yeah. do not have a level 3. So if you have a level 2 and you go halfway towards charging for a level 3, the moment you switch drift, the timer resets as soon as you go back to the original direction you were in. Yeah. Still have a lot of time, lucky. Okay. That track makes me so nervous each, each time. This track is just bad, I hate it. Oh yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean... The two bends at the end are really what make me dislike it. Those it are the, the rest of the track hardest. isn't that bad. Though the green carpet too, I can't forget about the green carpet. I mean, we have a Galactic Parade, which is another potentially at a choke point, but that's for a completely different reason. And you will see what I mean quite soon. So I'm now using a technique here which is basically chain boosting or stacking, which is basically storing two different sources of boost and releasing them at the same time. That is extremely useful for getting a higher level boost. So I accumulate a level 2 now and uh, 
soon I will have a level 3. Level 1, level 2 and level 3, which makes a level 5 boost. So the, the boost level can be easily seen from the colors of the flame behind your car. As a general rule, the longer your flame is, the higher your boost level is. But the core code is quite easy to, to remember, so... Okay, I failed to, to channel level red, 3 red, purple, here. blue, then like... Orange. And then we have this orange. Uh, we, ha we have a blue with a long uh, long flame and then orange with, uh, with rings. Big, big rings. Oh, that was... Very okay. Okay, now we are releasing the triple boost now, and this is extremely useful because in A-class getting to the triple pickup here at the lab 2 is extremely hard yeah, this, sometimes. This shortcut is actually time based, that little, that whole section will rise up if you don't make it in time. Yeah, there's a cycle basically, so if you, if you are not fast enough, uh, you will miss the opportunity to get that, to get that triple boost item. And I think that I will I will do quite a lot in plane section is rolling. Because oh, yeah. if you roll, if, yeah. If you roll while you're boosted, you don't slow down at all. But if you're not boosted, you actually just stop accelerating for the entire duration of the roll, which is six tenths of a second. So what it essentially does is it just keeps displacing you forward if you're if you angle it forward. So it just, it just, it's just a way to go forward faster. Try to go fast. Yeah. And he went really fast there because he clipped through the whole ship. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's quite easy to clip through the ship, uh, through the ship if you, if you start boosting at the right time. Because I think the main issue is the cycle uh, at which you you start boosting might affect when the when the ship appears. So, the, in the plane section, uh, boosting works a little differently. So you see me sometimes uh, drifting up to a level one and not getting a level two or level three as often as I as I do on land. And that's because while on air, boosting basically increases your speed irrespective of your boost level. So for up to a certain point. So basically, you always want to be boosting as much as possible, and you boost. don't care the level. Yeah, mostly. boost and play mode work the way you would expect a boost to work, whereas boats and cars just do not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All three of the vehicles work completely differently. Yes. Okay, so we are here again. This time for a race. And then another interesting stuff is while you boost start, you basically don't want to move as much uh, because you will actually slow down a little if you do. Yeah, oh, that's unlucky. This game is a weird physics engine where if you're, if you're like turning while at the start of a boost, it like interferes with your acceleration rate. And you don't want that. It doesn't make much sense, but whatever. Yeah. So we have the the super glow, which is an extremely useful item in general, <laughs> and especially for a speedrun. Especially against AI. Especially against bees, because it's quite easy to overtake the AI. Uh, when they are really far away, they will start. Screw we haven't, we haven't seen bees yet, have we? Not yet. No, it's very difficult to get before Twilight Engine uh, because of the A class. So, th so, so we're saying bees, and they're essentially the blue shell of this game, but they work differently. They're not guaranteed to hit you. They just spawn a bunch of bees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you get lucky, sometimes you can go right through them. It's very strange. On on elevated or curved surfaces, sometimes you just phase through them. Yeah, the hitbox is quite erratic. Yeah, it's super weird. And that's actually way slower than I expected. I don't know why. Transform 
So transform boosting the, with a triple unique is, I think, faster than boosting on the water and then getting the transforming. Espe espe especially in S class. I don't know in A class, to be honest. A class is actually really unexplored right now. There's a lot of, there's well, there's a lot of things. Territory. Yeah, the uh, the current world record doesn't act, plays A class the same way you would play S class actually. But there's some minor differences that could actually make up make for some really big time improvements. Oh yeah, that's true. Because level one boosts are actually good in A class. Yeah, in in S class they basically slow you down, so you don't want, you never want a, a level one. That's good. It's a bit slower than I expected, but it's still okay. And now we start with the first traffic attack of this speedrun. Everyone loves traffic attack. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the traffic attacks in World Tour are quite different from each other because they have very special stuff inside them. Each one of them has. So this one is the first one. It's ideally, this the easiest one. Um, but it has basically no items, so you just have to drive good. The second one, which will be in Dragon Canyon, it has items, and it's probably much more consistent if you know the patterns. Because the cars are actually not RNG, they drive on a very set pattern. So the green ones just don't move, and the yellow ones, they just strafe side to side. And the blue ones, the cop cars, they really want, they basically follow you. They try to get right in front of you, so you have to fake them out, basically. Like, you lure them to a side, and then you oh, switch okay. direction. That was unlucky. Okay, so sometimes you can basically land on top of a car, and that won't count as a hit. So Some what reason. happened there is, is, is he hit a boost pad right after getting hit, which means that he essentially doesn't slow down at all. Yeah. Because he, even a level 1 boost at like zero speed is enough to bring you up to near max speed. So boost pads are just kind of OP. No, alright. So... Oh, okay. Alright, I knew it. <laughs> In yeah. this game mode, the boost pads only give you uh, level 1 uh, Oh god, I am performing so poorly today. Oh yeah, the boost pads, the, the boost level that the boost pads give you varies based on every game mode. Because, I don't know. Sumo, I guess. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Sumo is always the explanation for everything. In matchmaking and time attack, they only... No, no, in time attack, they give you one. In matchmaking, they give you two. And here, they give you one? Uh, no. They, in some events, they give two. In some other, they give one. Wait, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Traffic attack, they give one. Boost challenge, they give one. Races um, versus... Uh, they give two. Uh, all stuff that are races, basically, give two. I didn't know it varied in this mode. Yeah. It does. Okay, so this is the second boost challenge uh, of this run. So this is one of the biggest maps where uh, water boost levels make a big difference. If you can just chain your boost... Yeah, I, I, I will section. try the triple unique in the water section because it's faster but it's extremely risky in A-class because it's way harder than S-Class. You should be able to get away with only two rolls. Two rolls should be the track, yeah. Yeah. Because you are slower in this, so getting, getting a triple unique is harder. Okay. And it's already hard. Okay, so now you have a stunt buffer, which is unlucky, but that's okay. So yeah, what you saw there was, on that section, for some reason, if you input a roll too early, the game just doesn't activate your roll, and the next time you hit roll, it makes you roll twice. <laughs> yeah, and this game basically has a 
some weird physics and in the preview some patch version you could basically uh, buffer anything <laughs> even the response which is a widely used trick um, for tank trials but they patched that yeah, but the, the stun buffer the stun buffer stuff is still present as well which is unlucky yeah. And I guess it's worth noting that like 98% of the competition in this game is time attack. Oh, I but... did it. That's okay. That's better. Oh, wow. Nice. Yes. Do it. Get the jump. You could do a huge jump here. Yeah. Should we explain the, uh, oh, he did rolling it. into the water section rather than drift rolling to gain increased speed because of how the physics work in this game? Uh, yeah, so each time you roll, stunting is useful for two reasons basically. The first one is um, for getting a boost uh, bonus, and the second one is because rolling actually displaces you on the left and on the right. You will see this basically here because I will attempt a stunt, um, a risk boost. And that can obviously make you gain more distance. And this is the first uh, ring challenge, I think. Yeah. Yes. There are Jeez. two ring challenges, if I remember. No, three ring challenges. And I just want to say how awesome this boosts actually are, because they just make the game literally twice as good. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Any obstacle, any wall, any form of a wall. Yeah, even walls. invisible wall. You can basically risk boost even of invisible walls, which and is anything okay. with collision. Yeah. If you just roll right before colliding with something, it just gives you a boost, and it's just great. Risk boost, risk boost. Yeah, we yeah. will see another slayer probably. I guess it's worth noting that you can miss a few rings in ring races, however, you just have to be wary of the time losses that you uh, take from missing the rings. Yeah, which is usually not a big issue in in A-Class because you have a lot of time, but uh, it actually still penalizes you because uh, every five rings you get an item boost, um, a boost item, unless you miss a, um, you miss a ring. If you miss a ring, the counter will go down to zero, so you have to to cross under under another five rings. Uh, that's extremely worrying sometimes. But there are points where you literally can't item boost, so you could route around it if you need. Oh yeah, that's right. true. Is this just some really? There's actually some pretty challenging turns in those ring challenges. So, this is the track in which the AI decided to be very nice in the beginning. This is, the, this is actually the, one okay. of the fastest tracks in the game in time attack. You can hit over 400 speed here, and that's twice base speed. No, it's probably in Valley you can be even faster than 400. Well, only technically, because you fall for like 15 seconds straight. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't be able to see that jump in this run. No, because we basically won't do Green Valley in this run. Because you... Because if you're just trying to any percent this, you don't want to play the map that takes like three minutes. Even more because three minutes is an extremely good time for S class. A class yeah, is, I think it's, it's impossible. It's really hard to hit three minutes on Dream Valley. So because... I'm keeping the level three boost here because I want to release it in the water section. Because yeah. that waterfall is extremely important to get to gain very very high speed. So. The way falling, when you're falling and you hit water, you actually, while you're falling, you gain speed. Like, you're accelerating as you go down. And if you hit water and you're boosted, you keep that speed. So you can actually go way faster than, like, even the fastest normal speed in the game. So in time attack, for instance, like, a 6 boost speed would be oh, too much. here we have the bees. Oh yeah, here's the bees. The first time you see them. Yeah, we will see a bunch of times, especially in Graveyard Geek. 
It's worth mentioning that the stump buffer, the stump fail that he's doing on the tiny ramp before achieving the level 3 from drifting, uh, you do not uh, lose any speed from the intentional stunt fail. However, it's, it's not really something that you want to do consistently, but it's very useful in small spots like those, as you can keep charging your drift and also gain small distance from rolling and intentional stunt fail. Oh, that's finally a good, good fast for the part, finally. <laughs> Double, double stunting there uh, at the stairs is extremely risky, especially in A-class. Here we are again. These are the worst places to get bees too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah. That's like arguably the worst place in the game to get bees. But you can see that basically I pass through the bees because sometimes the conditions doesn't work. Oh yeah. So yeah. So it's arguably not the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> because it's the tightest spot in the game, but also inclined surfaces just bug them out real hard. Sometimes they appear above the stairs. Sometimes they appear right on the stairs. Oh yeah. Some sometimes they'll spawn twenty feet above you. Yeah. Okay, so the, the next one is a battle race. There are only two battle races in this run. This one and another in Temple Trouble. Battle race works with an interesting mechanic. So you don't have all 10 racers, uh, but there are only five including you. And basically the main objective is to hit your opponents with items. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like the balloons in Mario Kart. Yeah, and it's I'm actually good. quite unlucky because I keep getting drones, which are arguably not the best choices for an item in this mode. Yeah, you don't actually have to go all that fast here. You just need to. You just yeah, need you to just need to everything. eliminate your other opponents. I mean, you can complete a battle race as a normal race. Yeah. But it's usually slower. It's very slow. Because you just have to finish all three laps, or hope some, or hope they eliminate each other. Oh, Taser is low down. He wants to hit me. You can easily guess the AI is. Yeah, <laughs> I said told there, yeah. The angle ally is still at full health, which is something I really don't want. Nice snipe on the wall. Oh, wow. Okay. That's unlucky. <laughs> Usually in battle races, you hope to get ice as you get... Okay, that was a, a nice battle race. You don't even have to use all three ice in succession, like just all as one. You can throw them one by one individually, and it will consider all of them as three individual hits. Yeah. Rather yeah. Than all of them as one, and it will be one hit. You want to use the items at the same time, for example, in matchmaking. Because if you hit an opponent three times with the ice, they will get a freeze, which basically slows them down for couple of seconds makes an item unable to accelerate this is the one stage in which we will see that this boost mechanic uh, better than any other stage in this run I'm actually using the safe path for the marathon because you can actually go to the left of the dinosaur and it's actually faster but more risky. Yeah, there's a wall and a, uh, uh, this, well, a large pillar in between. You can squeeze through them, however the timing for it is a little risky. It's one of the harder maps really. Yeah, it's but it's fun, especially if you get hit by the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Okay. We're gonna see that. So, uh, unfortunately, this map has a, a an element where gotta go fast is not the answer. Yeah, because basically there are a couple of stuff here that basically gets broken when you go too fast, 
And that's possibly because, I mean, I think that might be the case. The developers didn't really think you can get so fast in a certain section of the game, so they didn't time a couple of stuff properly. Yeah, so that drawbridge there, um, he actually had to slow down for it, because otherwise you would just... You can't go over it, you just hit it, and then you, you're you stuck falling down for like 10 seconds. I'm playing so bad today. <laughs> And uh, here we have the bees again. These are quite easy to avoid in the in any flight section, to be honest. Yeah, you yeah. can just go under or above. Also, you have to drive through fire if you're boosted, which you just did. Yeah. Also, be very careful of using the rockets, because they really like to to hit you when yeah. they bounce against something. At least 10% of the rockets you fire hit yourself. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> On lap 2, I don't think you have to worry about the bridge. So you can go yeah, the bridge three. is up, so I can just... You only have to worry through. about it on laps 1 and 3. And Actually, yeah, that was too fast. Later. Still good because I still managed to get a triple unique. That's one of the harder turns in the game too, because the turn starts way before the turn actually starts. It's like it makes you turn towards the left, but then you have to make a tight turn towards the right. Like, the finish like, lines. like where you land determines how you take the turn, but where you land is kind of hard to control. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very analog game. Oh yeah, that's true. It's oh it's god, to, I slowed down the game down quite a lot. Determine things. So you can actually, yeah, he just went through the wall. There. I keep stun failing actually... there, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a really annoying spot for that. Yeah, that's actually, annoying. That ring he just went through, you can land like over here from it. If you yeah, it, right? I mean the texture is. Not the same size as the actual trigger for the, transform the transformation. Oh, oh, I forgot the about. Okay. The bridge. Oh god, I forgot about the bridge <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> oh. You can easily guess. <laughs> that was so, oh <laughs> that was so bad. He basically took like the perfect one pixel out under it. Yeah. But that trick maybe made me lose something like 10 seconds probably. Okay, so this is the second traffic attack of the speedrun. And probably the best one. Just for yes. a very simple reason. Uh, this traffic attack has item boxes, but the item boxes are set. So you are guaranteed to get some items from these boxes. From these boxes. The first one is going to be a boost, if I remember correctly. It's also probably the hardest time, uh, traffic attack when you're playing for the first time. As all the turns and everything are very narrow, so you have to be careful about the cars because they take up space on the road as well as yourself. Now we have a glove, which is extremely useful, as you can see. Yeah, and if you hit two things in succession, the glove takes care of them both for you. And then next one is a boost. So we will boost chain here for level 6. The next one, I don't want to avoid that because it's actually a super glove. So it's extremely important, I get it. And you can easily guess why at this point. <laughs> Lots of yellow cars. How long does it last? Is it 20? 20, 20 yeah. Seconds. It's basically just heaven. You don't have to care about anything. Yeah. The way how this game works too is if you get a regular glove before the super glove ends, you can use the regular glove and I think reset the duration of the super glove? Yeah, exactly. It does. Actually, it does. Wait, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. It's such a strange thing, but it works, yeah. Oh god, I did, didn't count the, the boost item. That's not lucky. There's some things I still don't know. Because <laughs> I never played this. Really? 
I mean, you can do this in... Okay, why am I playing so bad today? <laughs> I'm so nervous right now. It's hard to commentate. Yeah, that's probably... Yeah, for this game, for sure. Because there's no end to things to describe, really. Yeah. So many things that can happen. Now we have a uh, ring race, if I remember correctly, in one of the best tracks of the entire game. The alternative is Dream Valley, but <laughs> this ring race is the reason we will go for go this Dream Valley anyway, just just for the people. <laughs> I mean, if if we have enough time left after, we probably can. This track is so nice. The music is so nice. Everything about this track is so nice. Uh oh, my stream froze. This course is more prominent to where you can miss a few rings and it really won't affect you as this is A class as opposed to S class and they give you plenty of time to go through these rings. So taking wide wider turns to take a few a few of the rings you really don't have to do. Some of the rings may seem to be out of the way as opposed to the rest of the track. So you could take small shortcuts here and there. You just have to be careful about the timings per ring. If you oh miss. yeah. Would you say this is one of the easier ring challenges? I would no. say so, yes. Just because... Only no. Because of the that trees are turn. terrible in this, in this ring challenge. I like the wider turn that you took earlier. You can uh, you can skip the, most of those rings, but you just have to be careful. Like, there are about three of them, I think. But as long as you don't hit anything. Yeah. The, the trees are a problem, though. And someone in chat... Are, like, and someone in chat that says that this track is from Panzer Dragoon. <laughs> The last one was. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, no, it wasn't. The traffic attack was. So. Yeah, the traffic attack. Yes, this one was from Skies of Arcadia. Very, very nice game. Get ready. Three, two, one. Okay. Go. This is one of the only two stages in the entire game which we start in plain form. So you see me rolling a lot. As we mentioned before, you can risk new stuff for pretty much anything that's like has collision. So you can just you know, risk boost as much as you like here. Really for some right. reason, you can't risk boost the right fall there. I don't know why. Okay, so you see me evading a drone right now. Another mechanic, which actually the game teaches about. <laughs> One of the rare cases. When the drone starts flashing as it's approaching you, if you boost slightly before uh, it gets ready to hit you, you evade it. And the same thing applies when you risk boost, as that is a form of boosting. So if you yeah. risk boost slightly before a drone is going to hit you, if not, you will evade it. Even an item boost. Maybe even the other item that boosts you. I don't know. Oh god. Wow, <laughs> did that happen? Wait, what? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> wow! <laughs> never happened that's, before. That's never happened before. Exactly. That's a, a jaw-dropper. Cool. <laughs> At least we have a that's never happened before moment. <laughs> <laughs> so this track is almost guaranteed to get the bees in the following section. So lucky for me, I have a glove. Actually, no bees this time, which this is nice. This that's coming up is actually the hardest run in the game. Probably, because you have to slow down so much to take it perfectly. Yeah. It's very, very narrow. There's not. There's only like. There's only a few turns in the game you actually have to slow down for. And that definitely is one. And that. Yeah. The blowfish that is just trolling. Rest 
Like most turns you have to slow down for, it's like you just like let go of Excel for like one second, but that one's like three seconds. Yeah. When 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 like rhythm approaches three seconds, it's really hard to get it precise. So this is one of the hardest time attack maps too. Oh yeah, that's true. Equinox here has the world is the longest standing world record of all time on this map. It's like four years now. That ending turn still gives me shudders. I usually try to like, um, what's it called? As we mentioned before, when we slow down on the last bit of turn there, you usually want to uh, hold your acceleration right when you're turning a right tightly. However, usually you cannot do that while your boost is still retained behind your car, which will make you slow down when your uh, Excel button is released while you're releasing it for those three or so seconds. Okay, so this cool. event, yeah, exactly. <laughs> This event is a sprint event, which is basically time attack. You basically yeah, have to complete. You have basically to complete the lap under a certain amount of time. These and are the best events. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy that you don't need a pre-lap, especially yeah. in this one. Yes. I usually get something like 59 seconds here, so we will see. And how many of these are there in this run? Uh, two. Not enough. <laughs> this one and the one in Chili Castle, which is arguably not the best, the best <laughs> track to, to have a time attack. So okay, no, oh my, okay. I was so distracted. I rolled three times. Still fine because the the ghost is so behind. That makes me lose two seconds. Just distracted today. Oh yeah, the ghost is way behind. Yeah. Okay, we will take a little detour in order to make this drift challenge. Lucky enough, any of these classic tracks, uh, we won't do any race in them. So we have about 50 stars now. How many do you need to complete? 95. 95. Okay, so we're almost there. Halfway there. Not almost. I mean, we still need to to start Twilight Engine, which is arguably the biggest and the worst section of the game. Uh, this track is uh, one of the few tracks that were ported from the original All Stars Racing and it's actually quite hard to race on because the AI are quite good in this track. It's also just a very tight track with various like, long straightaways and wide turns. So and no transformations per lap, it's just car all the way through. Yeah, so projectiles can just travel so far. And yeah, that's why it's really frustrating. Yeah. Like, imagine fireworks, you know? <laughs> Nothing is more frustrating than the next event, which is the only pursuit event we have in this in this speedrun. Pursuit is basically you have to destroy a tank that shoots stuff at you and it's actually very cycle based so there is no RNG. So every mistake I made is my fault. It's everyone's least favorite mode in the game. Definitely. So every like, I don't know, 20 seconds he opens up the back of the tank and he stops shooting stuff at the Yeah, he's going to open just, it now. Just, you have to just hit him. Okay. And he slows down. If, you, if, you, if you're going slow, he slows down for you. Yeah, so you don't want to be too fast because otherwise you can control like where he opens the tank basically. You can also angle your car to get six rockets per rocket lineup as opposed to three yeah. when just driving. Yeah, he's going to three. open the tank now, so which is good. Like, you really don't want him to open it on tight turns. 
Okay. That was not good. <laughs> and it's basically a three phase fight because he just he stops, he closes. Okay, that was good. Yeah. That, that was honestly nice. good. Was I mean, good. in my PB, I actually managed to destroy the tank before the leap. Which is probably one of the best tank battles ever done. Okay, so we are going to Twilight Engine. And. Twilight Engine is hard because the AI really starts to increase the, um, the aggressiveness. I don't know the reason because it's still an A class, so but the AI really starts to be more difficult to manage. Especially here because the AI really likes to steal your boost item here. Yeah, it's a triple item boost fairly early in the map, and uh, it's pretty hard to get it against AI. Because AI you can easily is see rubber band. Yeah, quite a lot, honestly. They actually match and they you. Got, and they got the triple item. Yeah. yeah. That's unlucky. There's a huge difference between getting it and not getting it. It's probably the most RNG part of the whole run. It's Not easier to get in lap two, but the AI uh, of Pesky, I mean, they may grab it on lap one, which wants to go. Yeah, it's fairly easy to pass in, even if you don't get it. It's just a matter of grabbing Okay, I, I'm doing so badly today. What's happening? <laughs> What's that's happening? That's actually one of the hardest turns, too, right there. Yeah, that's true, but... One of the I usually never turns. get that battle. Never. Never. I still can't take that turn. To oh that. god, no, no, not the drone. It's so strange to take. That drone made me lose a couple of seconds because I had to release that the drift boost before the, the boost pad. So he's gonna hold on to this triple item boost for the water section. Just to chain the boost so he never slows down. If you're lucky if you are unlucky enough, you will actually can actually lose the triple boost because at that that fall the transformation there is another triple pickup and if you get a triple pickup every item you have will be overridden so you can actually lose quite easily <laughs> the triple boost there's nothing like losing your triple item boost to rockets oh yeah no. on adder's layer yeah, that's true. So now I want to go the other way. I can get the triple pickup here. There's another super pickup here. It's a little detour, so you basically are not as fast as going through the main route. So if you are lucky enough, you can get uh, a glove before. We saw some pretty drink collision there too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. The game likes to try to make you, displace you towards where you kind of want to go. And you can use it to your advantage. If you, if you collide in a really bad way, the game will just kind of try to make it not so disastrous for you. That's true. And there's two maps where you can really use that. This one in Ocean View. No, no, in Shibuya Terminal 2. Shibuya Downtown, I don't, whatever, I don't, I don't remember. Okay, get ready for another battle race. Okay, this battle race, I'm actually not doing that. I will actually do in the normal race, mainly for two reasons. First, okay, Ralph, why did you hit me like that? <laughs> 
Okay, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, sometimes the AI just don't do a boost start at all and you just hit their ass. And, it really and that's worrying hard. because they are basically so close to me right now. Yeah, you typically don't want to be in first against AI in the, this mode. I'm actually doing a normal race because it's... I mean, it's slower but not too slow. So... And this way safe and way more consistent. Oh, oh, I, I have a sand buffer it. again. Uh, okay, we solved. Just, just go for two rolls, you can do the jump with two. Yes. Um... Not with my strat, to be honest. Oh yeah, because you drift. You hold yeah, drift I drift. After. So, so what happens if you're falling and you're holding drift? You don't gain like falling acceleration. But if you're not, you you keep gaining speed on every little fall. So you yeah, you actually want forward. to avoid these boost pads here because yeah, you're going downward and basically you're going faster by not boosting the. Yeah, so those boost pads are brilliantly put there to slow you down. Because like, just like the downhill acceleration is actually faster than the boost level. This just makes wonderful sense. I drift here because it's way more consistent in my opinion. <laughs> I've played this map for like 150 hours, so... That's a nice jump. I am one with this map. <laughs> nice nice These bluefish here yeah, are scary. <laughs> yeah, that's a really annoying spot because that's where you want to go. Yeah, exactly. Not okay. Finish. Event complete. Stickers unlocked. This run is a disaster. <laughs> it's still okay, I think. We are going pretty fast. Okay, so we return to Answer Dragoon in order for another ring race. This is quite fun, but it's probably the hardest ring race in the entire run. If you want to do it perfectly, obviously. If you don't care about missing a couple of rings, it doesn't matter much. There's a couple of points in this course where the uh, turn points to the rings, like from one ring to the next, are very, very tight and narrow. You have to be careful about colliding with either side of the wall. The walls become tighter as you keep going. Wow, this map is really fun. <laughs> so many points that you have to be careful about getting hit. With those two pillars back there. You never have to, you don't drive through any of these sections in the normal map, so it's really interesting. Yeah. And you're driving backwards through the map here. Yeah, you don't see any of this in the normal map. No, you never see them. a couple of rings but that's okay because probably the time there wasn't any time loss yeah, 13 seconds left so now we are back to other slayer and we are going to boost challenge you can go way faster in this boost challenge compared to the normal race especially in the the plane section. Wow, 
boost, boost map here adds so many boost pads. Yeah, they're incredible. And all these boost pads are level 1 boosts. As I told you earlier, Giant. So for some reason, even if this is a boost race, um, yeah, boost challenge, that would uh, lava stuff as in prison. At least the uh, bridge is up. Okay, so that easy. was bad. <laughs> I actually didn't use the boost item, which is bad. Because basically in this challenge, every time you complete a lap, the game will automatically give you um, a new boost item. Which is extremely useful. Damage controlling bad situations in this game can be pretty tough. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank god this game is 60 FPS. Imagine doing this on console. Imagine not. <laughs> <laughs> because the console version is, from a quality point of view, way inferior than the PC version. There's one very brave person who plays the console version. Yeah. For all the unique things you can do on it. Just because the PC version doesn't have a patched version to, re to revert to. So there's skips that you can't do on PC. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> That's still okay. Okay, now what I think is the worst event in the, in the entire game. Chili Castle! <laughs> oh dude, I love this map. <laughs> oh god, I, I hate this map. No, wait, no, I, re I remember now, I do hate this map. <laughs> Yo, the first turn on this map in Time Attack is, like, so bad. Yeah. There's a drop down where if you go too fast, you'll hit the top. Like, yeah. the high school part of it. So you have to, like, literally either slow down or not use a 3 boost too, soon, too uh, near it. It's not that big of a deal, but it would be nice. No, it is happen. a big of a deal. <laughs> well, I mean, it's easy to wrap around it, but if you didn't have to do it, that would be awesome. Yes. Oh, that's true. Because then you could go even faster here. Also, that that transform transform ring there is so easy to get a stun buffer. If you didn't have to slow down there in time attack, you could probably end up going like five seconds faster on this map. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's probably of one of my best sprint events in this track I ever done. Nice. Yeah, that was clean. Okay, so the next one is uh, a standard race, so nothing too complex or broken, probably. This track is so nice, I, I love it. The AI was surprisingly slow, I don't know why. You say that they are not so slow. Yeah, exactly. They're usually not so slow. Just, just general winter. So that shortcut he just did is actually really annoying to do. It's really hard. There's no walls, you could just fall into the water. You decide. I don't even do it. I don't either. I, 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 do, it, I do it only on single player, but in multiplayer I prefer not doing that. 
Oh, that's it's, wrong. It's, it's too brave. I'm not brave enough for that. Me either, I just don't have the, like, the courage. Just like, and if Equinox doesn't do it, then no one does it. <laughs> <laughs> Only fools do it. Oh, there's another drone. Behind me, probably. I can hear it. <laughs> oh yeah, sometimes you can hear drones coming for you, but you don't see the little pop-up for them. Yeah, you don't see the indicator and they randomly will hit you. So you just have, you have to listen and make sure you look for them. It's mainly a problem in multiplayer. I don't know how often it happens in here. Yeah, it happens in S-Class, it's quite common. I think if it retarget, like, okay, so if you dodge a drone, it goes to the person in front of you. Yeah, I think that's he, he, probably that, why it doesn't. He should do that, like that, but sometimes the, you don't get the the warning notification. Yeah. Your HUD. There's an invisible boost pad there, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, in the water section. Yeah. There are a couple of janky stuff in this game, like that invisible boost pad. In Dream Valley, there are a couple of invisible points in which you can reach boost for whatever reason. Okay, I think that the worst of the game is behind us. We just have this, yeah, the, the, this, the, this versus event and a traffic attack later, then basically the rest of the game is free. This is another very heavy RNG stuff. It's the same versus event we made at the beginning of the run. As opposed to earlier events where there were three uh, opponents you have to race, and this one you have to go against five of them. Sometimes they can fall off the course and make things easier for you, and in other cases they may hit you with items. <laughs> yeah. You just have to stay ahead. Wait, they can just drive off the edge? It's sometimes, called RNG. <laughs> sometimes, if you that's, get really lucky. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's called RNG. <laughs> <laughs> So what I want to do here is wait for Shadow to get the boost pad and then immediately hit him because he will lose the boost, uh, the boost bonus. Can you just ram them off the edge? Yes. Or could you just go slow and be like, boom, not off the edge? I don't maybe, know that. Maybe that's the new best route. I wouldn't be brave enough to try it. <laughs> Me neither. Him, Me neither. Not brave enough for that burning depth shortcut, but I'm brave enough for that. <laughs> Maybe on sections like these where you're coming straight down, where it's just like the middle of the track and then left and right, it's off, out, out of balance, maybe. Same as before, wait for him to get the boost. Oh no, no, the glow. That's unlucky. <laughs> Sorry, Shinkula. Oh, thank god. <laughs> Beautiful, I love it. Yeah, that's still a. Synchronizations. <laughs> Jeez. That's still bad RNG, to be honest. So the, uh, the AI isn't really able to account for uh, certain boost levels, or, like speed increases, and they'll just drive off the edge sometimes. They do that on Egg Hanger too. Ah, oh, that, that was terrible.
Okay. Probably won this. That was quite some bad RNG to be honest. And then we have an hundred rift challenge. I really really scared of this brief challenge because it's the only challenge I ever failed once <laughs> during a speedrun. This is the only one I failed as well actually too. So you're not alone. Yeah because it doesn't look like the like it but the tank here is surprisingly limited. And there's a bunch of narrow turns that you have to take, so you have to stay consistent with staying in between the borders of the drift, like the borders of the arrow lines. And if you don't, you don't gain all of the time that you would accrue from staying. Between. Yeah, sometimes the, the, the lanes that you the, the make want you to follow are not the fastest lanes. So you just sometimes don't go through them. Okay, we should be fine right away. These challenges are basically made to like force players to learn to drift well. Oh yeah. I agree. Because if you don't drift, you're just so slow. So okay, last traffic drift. attack of the of the speedrun. This is the only event we would be doing in B class because it's actually faster to do it in big class because there are less less cars less ways to cross even if you are slower there's like one map you can do on B class right yes it's the only you can you can do a single map one uh, in B class so you can choose whatever you want I prefer doing this in B class. It's actually quite faster. Rather than 15 hard waves, it's 12 medium waves, so the slower speed doesn't really matter. That boost item just saved my life. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that's so nice. Also, yeah, he's driving over grass with a boost there, so you can just go off. You can go over any like, bad turn that would slow you down if you're just, if you're just boosted. Pretty typical kart race and stuff. That pass is so scary. You basically don't see what's ahead of you. Also a rut you never want to take, unless the yeah. game forces you. The loop can be very misleading sometimes. Okay. Okay, we are back to Chili Castle now. But this challenge is quite free. Get ready. Well, you need to be careful about the time because it's still very tight with the time. Should be fine regardless. So next one is the last ring race 
of the run, which is carrier zone. Another nice chance to see section of the map you don't actually see in yeah. standard races. You drive into the ships. Yeah. Which makes no sense, but whatever. <laughs> I had a lot of trouble beating this on my first playthrough. Me too. I think I failed this probably like 20 ish times. Yeah, <laughs> it was this, just this in the adder's layer too. Can I boost here? This okay. game was so hard to learn. Yeah, this game is a really steep learning curve. It's really weird to like think about it now because everything is just so natural. Mm -hmm. You know, after like 800 hours, you know, it just happens. Yeah, but the transition, though, it's just like, you learn the basics, feel like you've learned the entire game, but then the game hands you a handful of hidden mechanics, and you have to deal with them accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think these are realistic ship designs. I'd love to be proven wrong on that. I guess it's worth noting that you cannot skip the one end of the ship from one end to the other, as there is an invisible wall there. So you yeah. have to basically go inside of the ship regardless. Okay, so the next one is the best challenge of the entire game. Because it's the only boost race of the entire run. Metal Sonic Genesis mod. And this, this is, is actually... Yeah, it's a shame. And it's actually so fun because this track is so fast in the boost race that you, if you look at the mini map between lap 2 and lap 3 you will see the AI doing some weird stuff which is a mechanic you don't actually see often which is catch up respawn Oh yeah if you if you if you uh if you make the map change and people are still on the old version of the map it just respawns them at the start of the new version of the map. It doesn't happen very often. But... Yeah, especially with the AI. But it will actually happen here, probably. New players will see it often in like multiplayer. It's probably not very fun to see. <laughs> yeah. You can easily see how far behind the AI are right now. The invisible boost pad isn't there on this map, is it? No, the invisible boost pad is only on lap 3. Wait, really? Yeah, only on lap 3, not lap 2. It's oh, so strange. Two things. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Sumo? <laughs> and isn't it like only invisible on certain parts, certain versions of the map? I think so. Like it's there in time it's attack. It's so strange. It's so strange. Isn't it there in time attack? You can see it. It's like a purple silhouette in time attack, but in regular racing, I think it's just not even there. Yeah. Yeah. So damn weird. Yeah, they just got respawned. If you if you look at the map. There's also there's also at least one situation in Galactic Parade where two of the two of the boost circles. The purple boost circles are actually stacked, so there's two of them. You can't tell there's two of them, but there's two. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. so oh, like this is pretty two. solid, by the way. Yeah, Sudo in chat says that 800 hours for learning the basics of this, for this game is incredible. <laughs> but yeah, the, yeah, yeah, this game is really, really hard to master. Okay, so the last run, the last race of this run, is pretty broken. 
let's say that. This track is very unique. Oh, that's okay. Thank you for the super glow because the AI here are quite crazy with the items. The that's first thing first, they take two paths, and as the two paths they break apart, there's a water section or a boat section and a plane section. And the person who first determines who, uh, what the other racers will take as well as themselves. You want to be in first and you usually take the boat section as it's faster and speed running as opposed to the, to the plane section. However, the AI sometimes may get ahead of you and take the plane section. Not always, but yeah, they like the plane section. Yeah. We don't yeah. want the plane section. It's way slower. Yeah, it's incredibly slower. It's also boring as hell, which is weird to say about a plane section. But it's the most boring in the game. Because you just drive straight. That's it. You sort of risk this, but not really. Not yeah, really, fun, really not really. <laughs> okay, th these, these boosts are pretty solid. Probably yeah, my... That's a good water section. Yeah. So you see all these waves, you can actually, okay, that doesn't, wasn't good. You see all these waves, sometimes you get enough air to attempt a uh, stunt boost. And that's really important, because you can just go faster and faster and faster with every little hop. This game is also very lenient about whether or not you're on the track. You can basically go off the track and still be on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a nice, nice evasion. So basically, this map just gets tighter and tighter every lap. Like it, it literally, like it shrinks every lap. The mini map's disabled for the entire race, only on this track. And the reason it's disabled, I think, is because if you look at it from a third person's perspective, everything is weird and layered on top of each other. It's like yeah. loops everywhere. Oh but, god. That wasn't good. Like if you if you're at the start line you just stop and look off the edge, you can like see parts of the track way below you. So like a mini map wouldn't really help you that much. So, in the last lap you don't care about the items, so you, you can just spam them. Yeah. Otherwise it's best to avoid leaving items in the track, you can actually hit the following lap. There's also boost pads in thin air on this map somewhere. Especially in the boost race version of this track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I honestly didn't know about that. I, I didn't know you could choose plane or boat for like, <laughs> until like less than a year ago. Really? It took me quite yeah. some time, maybe like a year and a half to learn that. Thanks. I thought it was random. <laughs> I had no idea. I just never looked at the silhouettes, I guess. <laughs> it's hard to notice the details when you're trying to go fast. Yeah, I, I first thought it was like just two paths, and yeah. it was just random, like either the plane or the boat. There's nothing else like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we almost finished now. I'm just coming up soon. We just need to get to the credits. And time. Okay, so <laughs> one twenty two. Okay, that's not too bad to be honest. I not thought it was no. Yeah, I, I thought I thought it was worse. But yeah, I think still it's a nice run. It's so really twenty two. Nice. Yeah, I, I think we have enough time to probably show off something else because the estimate was way too many minutes over what I actually did. So 
I, I think we can show something like, I don't know, maybe we can show Dream Valley or something like that. That would be nice, yeah. Yeah. So, I have to restart the game because I have to load my save file, so give me a minute. Um, so, I need to put my standard save file. And delete this one. Uh, users. Pokemon speed. Gold starts in 10 minutes. Uh, remote. Let's remove this one and let's restart the game. Sadly, there is no save management system, so I, every time I need to restart the game. Actually, you don't need to to create a save file usually when you uh, do a speedrun, and it's actually slower because uh, you usually lose one or two seconds of time because the game has to save every time but it's more safe for a marathon i think oh have you ever done a, a transform launch no oh man that's fun to show too <laughs> it gets so wet i mean we can show dream valley now so you should show, just show pink's video <laughs> 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 Okay, we are going with Aegis. Aegis is the last card of the game. The... You usually need to complete 100% of the game to unlock the console mod for this character. But it's actually the fastest one. And Dream Valley is quite a nice map, to be honest. The only thing here is, as always, the AI. Because now we are playing in S-Class. And S-Class is actually incredibly hard because the AI really likes to shoot you whenever they can as you can just see every ring he passes through gives him a level one uh, level one boost so he can chain them successfully while just running through multiple of them you know just constantly go up and then if you go through fast uh if you go through too many of them fast enough you'll have a constant stream of level six behind you which is the orange flame with the rings Oh god, that was not nice. Okay, riff for the launch in lap one. <laughs> the main point is that if you get fast enough, you can basically skip the whole water section here. Yeah, you can land in the transform ring on the other side. Yeah, it's actually quite hard to be honest. I managed to do that only twice or three times. It's pretty hard to do it three times in a row. Yeah. And if you if you fail it, you can lose up to 20 seconds, I think. Just from that one thing. Risk boost. Risk boost. Risk boost. Pretty rare to lose 20 seconds in a row. Risk boost. Risk boost. Risk boost. Some people turn the announcer off. I can't possibly understand why. <laughs> I don't. Okay, that <laughs> was too never... high. That was too high. Yeah. You need to land on the rock. Yeah. That was lucky, oh, by the way. Because if you miss the rock and you land, you land in the water section and uh, the water below the rock. You're going to lose so much time. As, you, uh, as far as you manage to land on the um, on the rock, it's still fine. That was so terrible, by the way. Oh god, I hate those blocks. <laughs> we wanted to show we wanted to show the jump but I didn't manage to do it any time. It not even once. I would have just went the time attack to do it. It's way easier with an item boost. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. You probably should do time attack. If I easy I have the time to do it.
and it's even more consistent in time attack, honestly. I'm actually gonna post Pink's video in chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're free to do it. It's worth it. That's probably 3 and 20. Yeah, 3 and 28. It's so terrible. Yeah, I, I, I think we have a couple of minutes, so if we have, I will load time attack because it's incredible. I will do one, just one lap, so. Just to show how broken this game can be. Get ready. Three, two, one, go. It's one of the best videos for this game ever. <laughs> Just to attempt to explain that video, if you're not like over a track, you kind of don't fall, so you... It, it it's honestly work. so much to digest. <laughs> it took us like a year to understand it. Oh yeah. And we still don't really understand it. Okay, this is the jump how you are supposed to do it. Oh, this is a good setup. Yeah, this is extremely good. The landing was not good, but that was it basically. Yeah, you basically skipped the entire boat section. Don't really even have to land in. Yeah. Yeah. Last time. Last time. Yes, that is a flying controller. <laughs> the greatest thing. <laughs> a flying Dreamcast controller in the Sonic game, yes. Who would have guessed that? to the beautiful Sonic Racing community who have made my life better over the last year. Good setup. And better landing this time. But yeah, that, that is basically the valley. And good luck on Pokemon Gold, guys. Yeah. Best of luck. So thank you for watching, guys. I think we are done here and... Thank you for letting me play this game for you today and see you next time, I hope. <laughs> I hope it was fun. Yeah? It was fun. Yep. That was fun.